Hi everybody. In this year render video, we're going to take a look at D5 Free. This is the completely free version of D5 available to anybody. We'll look at the material options, some of the asset options. We'll look at what you can do and what you can't do, which is primarily going to be some of the fancier AI tools within D5. I'll run through some quick render settings and we'll just talk about the program as a whole. And then we'll also talk about how it relates and compares to twin motion, something that those of you who are currently working in twin motion may be interested to hear about. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, everybody. So here we are in D5 2.11 in the free version. And this is the model we're going to work with. This is a French style home that came from the warehouse. And I've made some kind of structural changes and changes to the landscape, but effectively it is what it is. Now you'll notice the first thing we want to mention is material. So if hit M on the keyboard, you'll notice that we are prompted to unlock all assets. This will give you a prompt to switch to the paid version, but we're going to continue with the free for now. And one thing that's really important, if you're using the free version, when it comes to the materials in the asset library or asset browser, it's helpful to click this little icon right here and filter by free. And this means that you'll only be prompted with the actual free materials. And that will apply to models and pretty much everything else that you're going to use. We're limiting availability to just the free. Now, when it comes to the materials in D5, you do actually have quite a bit of freedom, even in the free version. I'm going to make this larger a little bit. Under the materials tab, we do still have access to some of the primary materials that you'll use in many, many builds. This includes concrete, whether for concrete paving or for rough walled concrete. We also have access to the beautiful normal glass, this one right here, which is probably the glass you'll use for almost every project. We've got access to quite a number of different shiny marbles and granites, especially if you're doing interiors. Now, there are a couple of things that are missing, and one that's really sort of missing that is kind of somewhat problematic is going to be the roofing materials. We really only have three, and they're not particularly good. So if we take a look here at the build, I used a PBR material that I found online, and I can't remember where I got this from, but this is how we're going to sort of mitigate some of the lacking materials. But everything else in this shot is effectively from D5 in the free library. So that's really, really great. So once you set up your materials, it's time to decorate your scene. So let's take a look at what we've got to work with in the free version. So when it comes to objects, you are again somewhat limited a little bit. Let's look here under the models. You can see again, we are focused on free. We still have an enormous amount of models to choose from. It is kind of staggering how much content the D5 makers provide. So for example, just under broadleaf trees, looking at free, you've got a huge selection. And one of the really cool things about this is they provided a lot of generic broadleaf trees. So at any point, you can just place in effectively generic trees within your scene. We can still utilize some of the paint features. So for example, this selection back here, you can see under my brush history on the right, this was all painted in using free D5 trees. And you can get a pretty nice look with this. You're going to lack some of the hero models, but for the most part, you can make do foliage-wise. You also have a huge amount of shrubs and flowering shrubs. Now, again, you don't have infinite variety. Think of this more as a snapshot of the foliage. But combined with the ornamental grasses, you can actually set up some really nice scenes using just the free materials. And if you just selectively pick and choose where these objects are going, you can do quite a lot with this. I'm going to turn on some of my other groups here as well. So you can see here is our scene fully decorated with foliage. We've got tons painted outside. We've got some beautiful white trees here. Um, I think it's Circus. We also have access to ivy as well and hedges. So when it comes to actually populating your scene, you can do quite a bit with the internal foliage, the free foliage within D5 Render. And I think that's really, really cool. Other programs will probably lock you out from a lot of this good foliage, but D5 provides a huge library available for you. 
In addition, we've also access to just two background planes. But again, the autumn trees is probably one of the most used ones there. So that's kind of great. And we have this urban daytime. Not a huge selection. If you take off free, you get access to a few more. But honestly, autumn trees, probably the one most people are going to use anyway. We have access to a few of the interior parallax. And you can see I've used that on the top floor here. There we go. Looks nice. And I've used it on the bottom floor as well. So again, I would love more of these, but in the free version, you know, you are kind of getting what you pay for. So there is that. But they're still really, really cool that there's any of these available. We also have some other basic models and decals, and we have quite a bit of outdoor objects. Not as much as the free, obviously. But if you're building stuff using supplementary assets, you can build some pretty nice scenes. For example, this model right here. This came from the warehouse, if memory serves. I think it's an STL file statue. But all in all, pretty happy with what you can do with the free foliage. We should point out, there are a number of things that are going to be missing from D5 Free. They're not necessarily deal breakers, but let's take a look. When it comes to terrain, for example, you have very few options. It's not, you know, it's not none. But it's definitely a reduced amount, and it can be a little bit problematic working with these. When it comes to HDRIs, again, you do have, you know, quite a lot that come by default. But by putting the free only, you are limited to a handful. Now, is this enough to get you through most renders? Absolutely, yes. And then particles and scatter, again, uh, the scatter is going to be its own video topic at some point. But most people are going to still be hand-placing a lot of their foliage, so that's less of a deal-breaker. We also lose the ability to use the text to 3D. You can see we have no credits. Now, this is, again, a topic I want to cover later on. I've only used this a little bit, and I really love the results. are really, really impressive. But it is, again, hidden behind that paywall. We've also lost the ability to download other users' HDRIs, so we can't copy their scenes or lighting information. And we've also lost some of the ability to do things like AI atmosphere match and AI material creation. So some of the fancier tools, including probably the most primary important one, which is the AI enhancer, those are going to be held for paying customers only. So that is something to kind of keep in mind with your actual work. One thing that is important to point out though with D5 free version is that you still have the full slew of lighting systems. So for example, we have the traditional geo and sky, which allows us to move a sort of pseudo sun. We still have access to all the cloud effects, the fog effects, and wind and rain. So our ability to create atmospheric renders is still there. And in addition, the HDRI and custom tabs are also available to you. When it comes to the lighting using a HDRI, Obviously, we don't have access to the AI tools where we can sample one image and kind of ask D5 to create a lighting system based on that. But we do have a whole bunch of default HDRIs. And more importantly, we have a custom tab. So what I did here was go into Twin Motion, find all the Twin Motion skies that I love using, and then just download them. Most of them come from Polyhaven. Find them on Polyhaven, download them, and add them to your custom folder here. And this is kind of going to a little bit allow you to transfer your way of working, particularly the HRIs you use from Twinmotion or Lumion or whatever other rendering program you use. And you'll have access to those within D5 Render. Again, none of this is hidden away from the free users. The only thing we're kind of lacking is the ability to download other users' sample scenes and take their lighting information. So that's kind of one little issue. However, we have the full range of effects as well. All of these are available to free users. Everything from the exposure to the highlights to doing things like bloom or lens flare. So the overall result from your rendered images is going to be pretty consistent. Really what you're lacking in many ways is going to be some more decorative assets. This is particularly true for those of us who do interiors more than anything. Here we're going to have a bit of an issue. For example, our indoor effects we don't have as many objects to choose from. And so this is definitely, so if we're looking at like furniture or the accessories, those are the things that we're really going to hurt a little bit on, especially when we limit it to just the free only. Again, there's some nice stuff in there, but you're going to have to supplement it from somewhere else as well. 
But lighting as an issue, that's not really a problem when it comes to working in D5 free. Now, if we want to take a look at the official D5 breakdown, this is their pricing page here. You can see as they have it in their own words, you're not limited by projects. You have access to the terrain, as you already pointed out. You can still import pretty much everything. I've not run into an issue thus far with the conventional files that you can import with D5 free. And you still have access to all the HRI lots and lighting, just like we just talked about. So all in all, you have a ton of content to work with. Now, this begs the question, though, is it worth switching to the Pro? And my honest response is, you don't have to worry about that until you want to start making money. If you're going to just learn D5, then stick with the free version for now. You can kind of dabble, kind of test your renders and, you know, increase your skills and level up. But ultimately, when it comes down to if you're wanting to make money off D5 and you need to be making enough money to offset this 360 a year, uh, which is, you know, it's not cheap. It's not crazy expensive, but it's not cheap. That's when I think the pro is worth switching to. So one thing we do want to mention before we take a look at the finished renders and what you can kind of do with D5, we do have to talk about the pricing separate to just the free version. $300, give or take a month or a year, it's not that bad. Now, we should point out, it's 360 or whatever it is, dollars a year on top of whatever other costs you're going to be using for your company or your business. So to put that in perspective, it's 300 odd a year, but if you're a SketchUp user and you're probably, if you're you know doing this for money, you're a SketchUp Pro user, that's also another, I think it's about, about 350-ish or something along those lines, dollars a year. So you're looking at somewhere in the region of just $700 just between SketchUp Pro and D5 Pro, just per year, just to get up and running. So that is something to keep in mind. However, if you're comfortable with, for example, Blender, you can definitely do a lot of Blender work and then go over to D5 Free. Although some people would point out if you're comfortable enough in Blender to do all of your modeling in Blender, then you're probably comfortable enough to render using Cycles or probably at this point the Eevee. So there is something to be said for that. Now, in saying that, the major competition for D5 Free is twin motion. Twin motion is effectively completely free at the moment. If you make less than a million dollars a year, which if you're making a million dollars a year, then I don't think $300 is going to bother you that much. But for most of us who aren't, it's really hard to compete with fully free versus free-ish, which is the D5 sort of free version. It's sort of a limited free. One thing we should point out on that Twin Motion's business model is really predicated on just getting everyone, catch everyone under the sun. Architectural rendering, uh, automotive rendering, interior design, everything, just all, all of it. It's trying to catch everything. And D5 is primarily still an architectural rendering tool. So it's a separate kind of, almost like there's a bit of a, a schism there in their priorities. Twin Motion is no longer just an architectural rendering tool. Now, we should also point out if you're serious about doing this and you're trying, okay, I think I'll try D5 render free. Stability is not an issue, at least in my experience, with D5. Now, there are buggy releases. There are definitely buggy releases, but they're very quick to be fixed. And for the most part, I think in, I don't know how many years I've been working with D5 now, since it almost came out, so it's almost close to five years now, I've had two sort of fatal crashes versus twin motion. Now, the other thing to keep in mind if you're thinking of trying D5 free is unlike Twin Motion or Lumion or Enscape, D5 free is a real time, as it currently stands, a real time path trace engine, which means the results are really good and very much what you see in the viewport is what you're going to get. Now, the counterpoint to that is you could say, well, Twin Motion has Lumen. Yes, it does. But Lumen is very buggy, very difficult to work with, and the results are not great, honestly. There's no way I put that. It's, not, yeah, I, Lumen is cool, but in twin motion, it's not there yet. Now, D5 render versus the path tracer within twin motion for a single static shot, the path tracer in twin motion is way better. But you lose the ability to use the path tracer for video. And when it comes to D5 render, 
what you see and what you get in the viewport is really consistent and has gotten better with future releases. Like ever since they released new versions, the viewport and the finished results are getting closer together. But also it's real time path tracing in real time, which is kind of incredible, honestly, uh, especially if you remember like scanline renders and things like that in 3D Studio Max, literally scanning a line, a render line by line. So there is that to keep in mind. Anyway, let's jump forward real quick from this and take a look at what you can do with the actual renders out of D5. I'll run through the render settings, just give you an idea of how to set them up, especially if you're thinking about trying D5 free. Let's take a look real quick at what else you can do. In addition to the free assets, such as the materials and the objects, we also have a pretty functionally well-working camera within D5. Now, it's not as advanced as what you'll get in some other rendering programs like V-Ray, but we do have options over rendering images or panoramas. We can adjust the field of view or the focal length, which is my preferred way of doing it, like a 35 millimeter focal length will match kind of what you get with a 35 millimeter camera. We can render in different aspect ratios and preset sizes. We've also mentioned that we've got some effects over here that are, again are not tied to the paid version, not just the use of the geo and sky or the HDRIs, but also access to post processing. So we're able to go in here and adjust the exposure, the highlight local exposure, if you want a bit more of a bloomy kind of effect. We can adjust the contrast, the highlights. So you can really do a great job of refining your image within D5 free. We've also got some more fun stuff like bloom if you want to try for more cinematic looking shots and lens flare and some vignettes. So there's all in all quite a nice little bit. We've also got the ability to go up to display and we can turn on different rendering modes. We could do grayscale or clay mode. We can also turn on real time effects so we could see our weather maybe in real time or we could see the paths of vehicles moving in real time. So there's some really nice stuff up there. We also have some options for adjusting the camera up here, including putting on perspective view. But all in all, this should be enough to kind of get you up and running within D5. And with that, we are done. I hope you enjoyed this exploration of D5 Free and what you can do with it. And thank you so much for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next video soon. Cheers.